I'm here to present uh, Rwanda's regulation on UAS. The outline of what we are going to talk about is a brief, a brief background on uh, US regulation in Rwanda, the first steps, the part 27, which is uh, our regulation on UAS in, uh, in, in, in uh, our regulations, the content of part 27, and the applicability. Well, uh, in uh, 2015, Rwanda started developing uh, US regulations, and there was a reason for this. Our leadership actually uh, took the lead uh, in uh, trying to embrace the drone technology, and they just told RCA to start thinking about re regulating drones. At that time, there was no even any uh, operator for drones. But there were some factors as to why uh, the government of Rwanda thought about uh, starting to regulate. One is that uh, US technology was actually emerging everywhere. And they, they thought we can be caught by supplies finding drones flying in the country without being regulated. So they said it's better to start preparing for that. The other one was that um, the drones are not expensive. Everyone is, is, is capable of buying a drone. So there was this likelihood that we'll have a lot of drones in the country. Then, many institutions started also talking about wanting to use drones in certain services. And RCA has the responsibility to safeguard manned aviation. That's why we are there. Those were the main driving factors for us to start thinking about developing regulations for um, UAS. So, the first steps, at that time, and even today, no ICAO subs on regulating drones. Rwanda CAA tried to develop its regulations based on best practices from other countries. The uh, European Aviation Safety Agency, they had started developing also some regulations. We uh, use the material of JALUS. I think many people are familiar with that. And then we said uh, we want also to try this and see how it works. So Rwanda CAA had to engage uh, major stakeholders, a navigation service provider who would uh, eventually have the, 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 the challenge once uh, the drones are in, in a brought into the airspace. And then we have uh, our regional safety oversight organization, KASOA, that was also gu gu guiding us on how we can go about this. So uh, this is part 27 of our regulations. Um, in 2015, we published first regulation. I just want to tell you that uh, because of this uh, emerging technology, we have no expertise on how actually to, uh, to follow up on everything about them, but we were trying to put basic control mechanisms to ensure that nothing happens, but we continue to learn. So there is this flexibility for reviewing and amending regulations as uh, a need may come. So 2015, we have uh, first regulations, and 2017, we had another one. 2018, we have another one. So there are different uh, versions. So what we have today is part 27. So what did we use? Since ICAO has no subs, we are talking about performance-based approach that we have just had. And specifically, we are talking about specific operation risk assessment. Because we want to uh, analyze every operation individually. So what do we look at in this? 
we look at the type of UAS that you are, uh, you, you are looking at, the type of operation that you want to have, and the area where this operation will take place. These are the three main areas that we have to look at when we, uh, we are doing this uh, uh, risk-based uh, regulation. We have, as I told you, our leadership is uh, very much supportive in this, and we have a legal backing for regulating this, and also in our role, there, is a, there are provisions for enforcement of regulations. So the content of part 27, which actually anyone, if you want, you can go to the RCA website and, and, and get this regulation. So we have general provisions, we have classification and registration of UAS, we classify them, and also the, every drone that is, uh, or UAS that is in Rwanda has to be registered. And then operation of UAS in Rwanda, as I said, we have to ensure that uh, a specific operational risk assessment is done. So uh, in this we have the basic, specific, and complex. Those are the classifications that we have in our regulation for the UAS that we have in, uh, in Rwanda. Then we have security and privacy provisions in that regulation. And then for uh, details of all these, we have appendices that we keep uh, putting as, uh, as we, we, we deem it necessary. So, these are the questions. What? All US types have to be regulated. Where? At the entry into one and territory. who will be regulated, a Rwandan or a foreigner who wants to operate in Rwanda? When? All time. Why? To continue to safeguard and control airspace users. How? Risk-based approach until ICAO subs are available. My presentation was as short as that. Thank you very much.